Hello everyone, welcome, hello, this is Anna English here on English Like a Native, trying very hard to bring you an English lesson this Sunday afternoon. Unfortunately, I have once again been having problems, this time with my internet connection. Um, it seems that Virgin just don't want to provide me with internet today, so fingers crossed this English lesson will go well. I'm going to try and rattle through the information as quickly as I can because this English lesson is an important one. This English lesson will help you to sound more like a native by teaching you the common contractions. So I do apologise if you are with me and you've been waiting since my breakdown in communication, but hopefully you are back and you can remain with me for the next 30 minutes perhaps, maybe even 20 minutes, as, as much time as it takes for me to get through this list of common English contractions. I am streaming live on Facebook and YouTube, so if you would like to see the notes that I am providing, then please do come over to YouTube where hopefully everything is going well. Um, we'll see. So here we go, the common contractions. Uh, so we start off, the very first common contraction that you will hear is the contraction ain't, ain't. Now ain't is short for a lot of things. It could be am not, is not, are not, has not, or have not. However, you must understand that this particular word, ain't, ain't, is not necessarily grammatically correct, but you will hear it a lot in common music. For example, um, a, a song that I commonly sing, and here is the song, Ain't No Sunshine. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. And they also use a double negative, which is also not correct, but in music and in poetry, it's all about artistic license. So artists can break the rules if they want to. All right, so the next common contraction that you will hear, and this one is a correct um, contraction, and that is the word aren't, aren't. I will just show you exactly how to pronounce that. We do not um, concern ourselves with the letter R. We open our mouth wide and do aunt, aunt. You see my tongue coming up to the N and releasing in the T, aunt. We aren't going. Aunt is short for are not. We aren't going. I'm sorry, we aren't going. Are not. Okay, the next contraction you will see and you will potentially be confused about the pronunciation of and that's the word can't, can't. Now the reason this confuses many people is because the shorter version, can, the positive version, I can do it, is pronounced completely differently. We have a short a vowel, can, I can go, I can. And then on the negative version, I can't, I cannot, I can't, we have a long vowel, open mouth, can't, I can't, I can, I can't, I can, I can't. All right? Brilliant. So, very commonly used, make sure that you know the correct pronunciation for that one. Okay, the next common contraction that you will hear is could've could've. This is short for could have. I could have if I wanted to. It's a conditional. I could have gone to the party if I had something to wear. I could have gone to the party if I, if I had a nice dress to wear, but I didn't, so I didn't go. And could have, we shortened to could've, could've. I could have gone if I had a nice dress to wear. I could've, I could've. Um, notice that we don't pronounce the L. We don't do could, could. That would be strange. We just do could. It should almost be spelt C-U-D. Could, could, okay? Could. Um, then another word, a contraction, using the word could is could not. And we shorten it to couldn't. I couldn't do it. 
I couldn't learn English because it was too hard, which is not true. I couldn't do it. I could not do it. Couldn't. And what we do is we bring the tongue up in the middle. Couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't. And we do what's called a lateral plosive. Don't worry yourself too much about this if you can't do it. But what we would naturally do is bring the tongue up. Could. And we allow then the sound to explode out of the sides of the tongue. Couldn't. 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 So you do it by keeping the tongue up on the roof of the mouth. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I could have done it, but it turns out I couldn't do it. <laughs> All right, so the next contraction we're going to look at, this is another very common one, and this is the word didn't. Didn't. So it means I did not. Um, normally I would go to school every day, but today I didn't. Normally I'd go to school every day, but today I didn't. I did not. I didn't. And that's another one, didn't. We leave the tongue up on the roof of the mouth for the second D. Didn't. 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 All right. Now, lots of you are firing questions at me and asking me to repeat things. What I would suggest is that you wait till the end of the lesson so that I can um, answer all your questions and concentrate on you individually at the end. So let me just get through this list first, just in case I have any more internet problems, and then I'll answer questions at the end. So, didn't. The next one is the word doesn't. Doesn't. And this is a contraction of does not. She does not normally stream on a Sunday. She does not normally stream on a Sunday. He does not like eating sprouts. Oh, so we shorten it to she doesn't. Does. And it's a Z sound. She doesn't normally stream on a Sunday. He doesn't like eating sprouts. Doesn't doesn't, doesn't. All right. Okay. The next one um, used all the time is the word don't. I think I use this word quite a lot. Don't. It means do not. Don't. Don't do that. Don't be negative. Don't be unpleasant. Um, do not go to school in a bad mood. Do not go to sleep on an argument. Don't go to school in a bad mood. Don't go to sleep on an argument. Don't. Don't. Now, lots of people use this word because it's a common word, but many people mispronounce it because of the vowel sound. The vowel sound is a diphthong. That means it's two vowel sounds moving together. O, O, don't don't. And the N is the tongue up. Don't. Don't. Okay? Don't do it. Don't mispronounce it. Alrighty. So the next one. Now, this isn't technically, um, it's not a word you'd see written, but it's a word that you would hear often, and it's the word gonna. Gonna. I would say that this is a little bit slangy, so I wouldn't use this in formal language. Um, I wouldn't use this at work very much, or if I was presenting, I wouldn't really say gonna. I'm gonna go. It means going to. Going to. So if I'm saying I'm going to leave, I'm going to go, but I was being a little bit lazy, I'm not trying to make a good impression or anything, I'm just relaxed, then I'll probably say to my friends, look, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Gonna go. But it's really important that you never use this in written English. Not in a formal way anyway. So never use this in written English. Okay? Gonna. Gonna go. I'm gonna say this only once. Never use it in written English. <gasps> I've said it more than once. <laughs> okay, let's carry on. The next one, again, the same as gonna, 
This you would never see written, not really, not unless it's written in slang or um, if it's a, like an informal thing, like in someone's diary or graffiti. And it's the word gotta, gotta. It means got to, and we actually pronounce it gotta, gotta. So those T's become like D's. I've gotta go. I've got to go. I've gotta, 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 gotta go. I've gotta go. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna go because I've gotta go. I don't want to go, but I've gotta go. I have um, a cake baking in the oven and if I stay any longer, it will burn. So I've gotta go and I'm gonna go right now. All right, gotta and gonna. So then we have, oh, I've missed off the T on this one. Then we have the contraction hadn't, hadn't, and this is short for had not, hadn't, hadn't, hadn't. The D and the N become the same sound, hadn't, hadn't, hadn't. So the tongue just goes up the once and then comes down for the T, hadn't, hadn't. I had not realised that you were coming to class today. I had not realised that you were coming to class today. As a native, I would say, I hadn't realised you were coming to class today. I hadn't realised you were coming to class today. I hadn't realised. Um, the next one, very similar to hadn't, is hasn't. Hasn't. It means has not. Has not. So, um, hasn't, hasn't. S becomes a Z has, hasn't, hasn't. She has not, she has not brushed her teeth. She has not brushed her teeth would become, she hasn't brushed her teeth. She hasn't brushed her teeth. <gasps> she hasn't brushed her teeth. Tell her to go to the bathroom straight away. She's gotta brush her teeth before going to school. Okay, I'm just gonna put my leg over here. Ah! Okay, so you may or may not know that in my studio, I, I stream while sat on the floor. Um, it's very uncomfortable, but that's the best position for me to get all my wires and everything in the right place. And um, yes, so sometimes I have a little bit of a nightmare because I get cramp in my legs and I get a, a numb bum. Mm, I get a numb bum and my phone is now in the way. Okay, so sorry about that guys. <laughs> I nearly dropped you. Okay, so hasn't. Anna hasn't felt very comfortable during this lesson while sat on the floor. Um, alrighty, so the next one we have is haven't, haven't. And this is a contraction of have, is a contraction of have not, have not. I have not done it. So if I asked you, have you done your homework and you have been very naughty, you've not completed your homework, you could say to me, teacher, please forgive me, I haven't done it. I haven't done it. I'm so sorry. I haven't, haven't, haven't. Nice and easy. All right. The next one is heed, heed. And that's short for he had or he would. So I might say, um, he's not hungry. He, no, he had, he'd. So here's a sentence. Um, if, if I, if you said to me, will, will David come with me to the cinema? Do you think David would come with me to the cinema? And I could say to you, he would if you asked him. No, I would say he'd, he'd love you to ask. He would love you. <laughs> There's only certain circumstances where you would use these contractions and sometimes it's hard to think of the right circumstances. So I would say he would love you to ask him to go to the cinema. He would love you to ask him to go to the cinema or he would really like it. And in that case, I would contract it down to he'd love it. He'd love it if you asked him to go to the cinema or um, 
he'd really appreciate it if you asked him to go to the cinema with you. Um, he'd... Yeah, I can't think of any other examples off the top of my head. If any of you watching can think of some examples, contractions for heed, then that'd be great. Um, sometimes these things are hard to come up with off the top of your head. That means to think about it without pre-planning. Um, all right, so the next one we're going to look at is another he, and it's he will or he shall. So heel, heel, sounds exactly the same as the heel on your foot. So the bottom of your foot, heel. Um, I might say, um, I might say my son will start school in September. He will start school in September. He'll, he'll start school in September. He'll start school in September. And he'd and he'll are both quite commonly used in formal or informal speech. So he'll, he'll start school in September. Okay. The next one is another he, and it's he's, and this is short for he has or he is. So that I could very simply say, this is my, this is my student Bernard. He is a bear. And I can shorten that to say, this is my student Bernard. He's a bear. He's a bear. He's a bear. Okay, nice and easy. Make sure that S is sounded like a Z. He's. He's. And notice how when I say a, ah, I don't say he's a bear. I make it a schwa. He's. He's a bear. He's. He's a bear. Okie dokie. Oh, bless. Julia has just dropped a super chat. Thank you very much, Julia. That's very kind of you. You sent two euro super chats saying, good afternoon, lovely Anna. Nice lesson as usual. That's very kind of you, Julia. Thank you. Um, you may or may not know that super chats on YouTube are small contributions that go towards the um, running of this channel and will eventually also contribute towards the improvement of this channel. Of course, I'm always experimenting with different video formats, with different equipment, different setups, and um, these things aren't cheap and sometimes I'm unable to afford certain equipment and so Super Chats and patrons help me to improve this channel for you. So thank you very much, Julia, on behalf of the whole community. Thank you. All right, so the next one is howd. Howd. I wouldn't write this down in formal English, but um, it's used common in, commonly in spoken English. So howd is short for how did or how would. So I might say to you, if I see you do something fantastic, but I don't understand how to do it, I might say, how did you do that? How did you do that? How did you do that? That was amazing. And instead of saying, how did you do that? I would shorten it to, how'd you do that? How'd you do that? How'd you do that? That was incredible. How'd you do that? Or, um, how'd you learn English so quickly? How'd you learn English so quickly? How did you learn English so quickly? Okay, so how'd. Don't write it, but it's fine to be spoken. The next one is howl, howl, howl. And this is short for how will, how will. How will you do that? So if you say to me, Anna, I am going to learn English in two whole weeks, just two weeks, and I will be fluent in English. And I will be like, well, how will you do that? 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 How will you do that when you're so busy with your job? Okay, so howl, 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 and that's a dark L as well. Howl, 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 quite a difficult one actually. All right, so the next one is hows, hows, and this is how is, how has, or how does. I normally will say this, um, particularly if I'm speaking to someone, a friend or someone I haven't seen for a long time, perhaps a colleague, I would say, how's your family? Or how's your job? How's life? And the S becomes like a Z, how's, how's life? How's, 
How's your work? How's your project? How's your mother? How's your son? How's your bear, Bernard? And how's Benjamin? So it's commonly spoken, but again, I would be very wary of using this too much in written English. If I saw this in written English, it would come from um, a friend. It would be an informal email or a letter, but I would not expect to see hows written down in a formal way. Okay? So the next one, very common and can be used formally or informally, and that's the contraction I'd. I'd. Now, importantly, the word I, it's one letter, but it's a diphthong. It's a nice long sound. I. Notice how my tongue moves. I. I. And then when it's in a contraction like I'd, you have I'd. So the tongue makes a big movement from below, back of the tongue comes high, and then the front of the tongue for the D. I'd. I'd. I'd like some ice cream. I'd love some ice cream. It's short for I had and I would, so I would like some ice cream. Would you like some ice cream? I'd like some ice cream. I'd love some ice cream. In fact, I do have a nice cold drink here. This is a, um, um, what was it? Elderflower cordial and water with some ice and lime. Oh, and it's delicious. Now the ice is melted, so it's not so cold anymore. So, I'd like a fresh drink, please. <laughs> um, so the next one, another very common one, and you can use this formally or informally, and that is the contraction, I'll, I'll. This is tough to pronounce for some people. It's short for I will, and sometimes I shall. Um, I will go to the shop. I will go to the shop. I'll. I'll go to the shop right now. I'll go to the shop. Do you want anything? I'll go to the shop in a moment. I'll. Now this is a dark L, so you make sure you get that I and then the, the L, the tongue comes up. I'll. 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 Nice and easy when you know how. So the next one, again, formal and informal. You can use this wherever you like. And it's the uh, contraction, I'm. I'm. So it's short for I am. And we use it all the time. Hello, I'm Anna English. I am Anna English. I'm broadcasting to you successfully, <laughs> thank goodness, live here on English Like a Native. I'm teaching you about contractions. I'm, I'm. Nice and easy. The next one, again, formal and informal, just like the last three, is I've. I've, short for I have. This is, again, very, very common. And so I might say, um, I've only got a short amount of time left. Or let's say, I've only got five minutes to speak to you. I have only got five minutes to speak to you. I've only, I've only. So the V is the bottom lip on the top teeth. V, I've, I've. I've only got five minutes to speak to you. I've only got five minutes to speak to you. Um, I've, I've. Okay, nice and easy. And that V will go on to the next word, I've only, I've only. Oh, I feel like I'm going to sneeze. Nope, not going to sneeze. It might come later. And then you'll have to say, bless you. So if I sneeze live here in this video, you would have to say, ah, bless you. Okay, so the next one is isn't, isn't. It's short for is not, is not. So I could say, um, my, my mother is not here right now. My mother is not here right now. My mother isn't here right now. Isn't. I. Make sure that's bright. I. Is. Z. Is. Isn't. And the tongue stays up on the Z into the N. Isn't. Isn't. 
isn't. My mother isn't here right now. You'll have to come back again later. Okay. So the next one is, oh, and isn't is quite common as well. You can use that formally or informally. The next one commonly used and fine formally and informally is um, it, it'd, it'd, it'd be good, it'd be good. And it'd, it'd, it's quite a mouthful to say on its own, but it'd, it'd is short for it would, it would, it'd, it'd, difficult, it'd. So I might say it would be good, it would be good if you were live every Sunday. It would be good if you were live every Sunday. It would be good if I could stream without having technical problems. It would be amazing if I could stream without having technical problems. But what I would say as a native English speaker is, it'd be good. It'd be good instead of it would. It'd be good if I could stream every Sunday. And like I said, in my very, very first attempt to stream, if I can get one of these streams over 300 watchers, then I will stream again next Sunday. So if you are here and enjoying this and you want to see me next Sunday, make sure you hit that share button and let's get in your friends to get these numbers up. All right, the next one, it'd, is followed by it'll, it'll, it'll. And this can be done in one or two ways, but it's short for it will and it shall. It will or it shall. Um, it'll. You put the tongue up onto the roof of the mouth and you keep it there for the L. So it'll, it will be okay. It will be okay. I'm reassuring you, it will be okay. We'll learn English together. It'll be okay. You don't need to worry. Anna's here. It'll be fine. It'll, it'll. Um, it'll, it'll. The other way you can do it is to release the T. It'll and go back for the L. Not as natural, but if you find it difficult to do the sideward plotion that I spoke about, the lateral plotion, it'll, it'll, then you could try releasing and going back, it'll, it'll, it'll be okay. Okay. It'll all be okay. So the next one, again, very common, can be used formally or informally, is the um, contraction it's. And this is short for it has or it is. It's. It's. Now, I hear this a lot from my students. And one of the one of the problems that I hear is that the T isn't isn't recognized. It it's aspirate. So it's it becomes like the S. It's it's it's. But you don't want is is, which is what I hear all the time. So you don't want an I and then an S. Is. It's okay. It's all right. Is what I hear lots, but it should be it's. It has to be harder. So, so you start it harder and you have a smaller space. It's okay. It's all right. It's going to be fine. Or it's gonna be fine. So there's two contractions. It's gonna be fine. Don't worry. It's gonna be a lovely day. It's gonna be sunny. All right. So the next contraction we have, it's not one I hear very often, but it's on the list because we're doing a complete list. We're going to try and do all the contractions in the English language. So if I've missed any, please do let me know at the end. But this is one that's not very common, is mayn't, mayn't, mayn't. It's short for may not, may not. Um, mayn't, um, a, a sentence you could use is, um, I may not, I may not attend the party. <laughs> I'm always talking about parties. I may not attend the class tomorrow. So the contractions could be, I mayn't attend. I mayn't attend the party tomorrow. But in all honesty, guys, this is a little odd. For me as a native, it sounds odd. It looks odd. It's uncommon. It's uncommon. So be aware of it. If you ever see it written down or you hear someone saying it, then what they mean is may not, may not, but it's uncommon. We more often would now say might not, mightn't, which I'll come on to in a minute. 
So it's there for your to be for you to be aware of, but it's not common. So the next one is mayev, and this is common. Mayev, mayev. I wouldn't write it down formally, um, but you will hear it spoken in all sorts of um, places. So um, this is short for may have, may have. So if you sneeze right now, achoo, and I say, oh, bless you. And then you say, oh, I need a tissue. <laughs> I need a tissue to blow my nose, please help. And I'll go, oh, hang on. I may have a tissue in my handbag. I may have a tissue in my handbag. And what I would say in in natural speech is, I may have a tissue. I may have, I may have a tissue in my handbag. One minute, I may have a tissue in my handbag. You see how easy it makes speaking. It just makes it flow. And it's so easy. I may have a tissue in my handbag. Okie dokie, let's carry on. So the next one, um, the one I said that we normally use instead of mayn't, may not, is mightn't, mightn't, I might not. Um, I can use this in the same, in the same scenario, you've asked me for a tissue and I say, I'll have a look, but I might not have one. I might not have one and so I don't know what we'll do. And what I would actually say is I mightn't have one. I mightn't, I mightn't. The T, the final T, sorry, not the final T, the T at the end of might, it goes a little quieter, duller, mightn't, mightn't. I mightn't have one. All right. Okay, so the next one is I might have. Might have. So I could say, um, I'm not sure where my husband is. You know I don't have a husband, but if I did, if this is my husband, no, this is my son. This is my husband. My husband goes out for the day. He doesn't come home when I expect him to come home. Where is Benjamin? I might say to you, do you know what? He might have gone to the pub on the way home from work. He might have had a hard day and he might have gone to the pub on the way home from work. What I would actually say is, um, do you know what? He might have, he might have, I would use the T probably, he might have, he might have had a hard day and he might have gone to the pub. It's fine. He might have had a hard day and he might have gone to the pub, but he's going to be in trouble when he gets back. And then he comes in. Whee! You're in trouble. What time do you call this, Mr. Bear? Just walking in whenever you like, whenever you like to. Okay, so, um, handbag. Yes, a sky is saying, I'm sure you said handbag instead of handbag. That's right, we say handbag. Handbag. <laughs> and that's another thing, like, we regularly make words shorter when we're speaking naturally to make them easier to say. My handbag, handbag, because to say handbag is a bit of a mouthful, my handbag. So we say handbag, handbag. Okay, the next one, we're getting through it. The next one is mustn't, mustn't. This is very common, mustn't, must not. You must not. Bernard, you must not go to the pub after work without telling me first. I made your dinner and your dinner is ruined. You mustn't do it again. That's what I would say to him. You mustn't. You mustn't do it. You mustn't be unpleasant. You mustn't give up. You must not. Mustn't. Notice again, because the two T's, we don't do mustn't. Mustn't. That would make it harder. We do must. So that T at the end of must in this contraction is gone. Mustn't. You mustn't pronounce that T at the end of must. Nt. All right. But if it's must on its own, just the word must, then you must pronounce that T. Must. You must, must, must. Okay. The last must word is contraction is must have. 
Uh, yeah, must have. Must have. Must have. Like the same might have. He must have. He must have. Um, so you might say, has Anna, has Anna done all the things she promised she would do? And you would say, well, she must have. She must have. She always keeps her promises. She must have. I try to keep my promises. I really do. Uh, okay, so must have. We do pronounce that T and make sure that V is the bottom lip, top teeth. Must have. Must have. <laughs> Sounds like mustard. Slightly different. Okay, so this is a very common one. And um, I... I don't think there's a problem with writing this down formally. I think the general rule of thumb is if you're writing formal emails or if you're writing your CV, I would avoid contractions in most cases. You can write I've, I'm, I'll or um, it's instead of it is, but in general, I would avoid all other contractions just because it, it just it's nicer to have the full language. The language is there to be used. If you're taking the time to write, then you don't need to shorten what you're writing. So if you're not sure whether a contraction is formal or informal, then um, just don't use contractions. Use the full sentence. So needn't, needn't is short for need not. Um, I I might say to you, um, my son, <laughs> this is my little bear family now, my son, um, Bernard, has been playing out for three hours and I'm not sure where he is. I'm worried. I'm worried. And you could say, Anna, you need not worry because Bernard is playing with my son, who is a lot older and will keep him safe. So you need not worry because he'll be safe. And what you would say is rather than need not, you'd say needn't. Anna, you needn't worry. Bernard will be absolutely fine. You needn't worry. Okay? Needn't. Needn't. And so the tongue is tapping a lot. Needn't. 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 I like that word actually. It feels good to say that word. Okay, um, lots of you being very kind in the comments, lots of lovely compliments coming through. If you are enjoying this, guys, then please do click that thumb button um, or give some love on Facebook. That'd be great. Okay, so here's an interesting one, um, one that we use all the time and you do use written. You wouldn't use this, um, you wouldn't say this in full and it's the, it's the contraction o'clock. O'clock. So when we're talking about the time, when we're talking about um, when we're when we're telling the time on the hour. So one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten o'clock, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock. We always say o'clock, unless we're saying p.m., a.m., or in the evening in the morning. But even then, when we say in the evening or in the morning, we would say probably it's two o'clock in the morning. It's four o'clock in the evening. Um, another thing to note, a mistake I hear a lot, is you would never say p.m. and or a.m. and o'clock together. You either say p.m. or a.m. or you say o'clock. You don't say it's four p.m. o'clock. No, you never use those together. You use o'clock or you use a.m. p.m. Also, you only use a clock when we're talking about on the hour. We don't use it for anything past the hour. So if it's five past one, you don't say five past one o'clock. Nope. If it's quarter past one, you don't say quarter past one o'clock. Nope. Half past clock. Half past clock. Half past one o'clock. No. Quarter two o'clock. No. Two o'clock. Yes. So it's only on the hour do you use o'clock. And o'clock is short for of the clock, of the clock. But we never say this, ever, ever, ever. You wouldn't say it's five of the clock. It's ten of the clock. If you said that, people will look at you and say, what? 
In fact, I would hazard a guess and say that maybe less than 1% of the English speaking population know what o'clock is actually a contraction of. Most of them won't know that o'clock means of the clock. They won't know that. They won't be able to tell you that because we never use it. So, o'clock, just o'clock. And we write it as well as speak it. Okay, the next one is oughtn't. This is an awkward one. Oughtn't, oughtn't. Quite a difficult one to pronounce, even for me. And this means ought not. I ought not. And it's usually followed with the word to. I ought not to. Um, He ought not to. It it's kind of means like he shouldn't. It means he should not. He should. I ought. I ought to go. I should go. Um, or I ought not go, I oughtn't go, but normally it's with two. It's an awkward one. It's an awkward word to work with, but the pronunciation of oughtn't is or, this hard vowel, big space inside the mouth, or, n, t, I oughtn't, oughtn't. It's a very awkward word. I don't use it very often because it's quite awkward to say, and I don't hear it very often, but I have definitely at times heard this word. So good one to be aware of, but don't don't worry too much about it. It's not overly common. Um, shan't. Here's another one. This one is relatively common. It means shall not. I shall not. Or if you are a fan of Lord of the Rings, you remember Gandalf sta- stood on that big bridge and was like, you shall not pass. Now, if Gandalf wasn't so well-spoken and if he wasn't being so dramatic and he was just being relaxed, he might say, you shan't pass. <laughs> it doesn't have the same effect. You shan't pass. It doesn't work quite well, does it? Um, but you shan't. You shan't pass. Shan't. We miss out the L's altogether. Shan't. 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 I shan't, I shan't do it. I shan't pass because Gandalf told me I won't, shouldn't, can't. You shan't pass. Um, Okay, so the next one, very common, it is she'd. She'd, short for she had or she would. Very, very common. Um, She'd, she'd go to the competition next week Um, if you let her. She would go to the competition next week if you let her. She'd go. She'd. She'd. Just make sure that you get that nice E before you hit the D. She'd. She'd go if you let her. All right, next one, again, very common, can be used formally or informally, is she'll. She'll. Very similar to heel. Um, She will. She shall. She'll go to the competition whether you like it or not. She will go to the competition whether you like it or not. She'll go. She'll go. Um, she'll. And then we have also she's. She's. Short for she has or she is. So I could say, um, hmm, I don't have any more teddies to hand, but I'll say, This is Bernadette. She's a bear. She's a lady bear. Oh, I'm a lady. She is a lady bear. She's a lady bear. She's a bear. Okie dokie. (laughs) So the next one we have is should've. Should've. You should have. Short for should have. Should've. Should've. You have to make sure you get that D and then the strong V. Vibration with the bottom lip, remember. Should've. Should've. Now, should, exactly the same as could, could be spelt S-H-U-D. Should. There's no L pronunciation there. So it's a silent letter. Should. You should've done it. Anna, you should've done the washing up. I'm sorry, I didn't do the washing up, but I'm gonna do the washing up later, I promise. Should've. We also have shouldn't, shouldn't, 
which is should not, shouldn't, shouldn't. You shouldn't, shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have done that. And shouldn't, it's the same thing. Tongue goes up on D, should, and then you release the D, the NT up there. Shouldn't, the tongue stays up. Shouldn't, shouldn't. Um, um, one, one comment in Facebook is, Anna, you shouldn't get married. <gasps> well, I'm not planning to get married because I'm not engaged. There's no engagement ring on my finger. That means I have no promise to anyone to get married. So you say I shouldn't get married. I'm not gonna get married. Lots of contractions being thrown around here. Um, the opposite to, no, well, not the opposite, but another one is should of. Should of. You'll hear this a lot, but this is bad grammar. It's not correct. But you'll hear natives saying it all the time. I should have. I should have. Sorry, I should have. Because it sounds like should have, should have, which is short for should have, lots of people mistake it for should of. Should have. I should have. I should have. I should of. I should of. And it's the same with would of and could of. I could of. I should of. I would of. But of, O-F, is wrong. So be aware of this. It's something I used to be confused about as a native speaker. Um, when I was growing up, I was like, is it should have or should of? I don't know. And it's because I always heard should have, should have. And I couldn't work out if it was should have or should of. But now you know, you know, which is probably knowledge that most people don't have. You know that should of, would of and could of is wrong. So... Kudos to you. You know something that most people don't, even a lot of natives. Should have. Then we have somebody's. Somebody's. That means somebody is or somebody has. Now, I, I when I hear this word, um, somebody's, and that's a Z at the end, somebody's, somebody's. When I hear this, it reminds me of a phrase that I hear often if somebody is making a bad smell. So if somebody is trumping, those of you who've been with me for a while, seen some of my lessons on YouTube will know that trump, yes, like Donald Trump, the word trump in England means to fart. <gasps> oh, I'm so sorry. To fart, the nicer term is trump. So I'll say someone's trumped. Somebody's trumped. Somebody has trumped. Somebody has trumped. Or somebody's trumping right now. I can hear it. Are you trumping? You're not trumping. Well, somebody's trumping. Somebody's trumping. Um, one of you in the Facebook chat has put somebody's is talking. You don't need the extra is. It's just somebody's talking. That's the point of contractions is it brings lots of words together so that you don't have to say too many words. Somebody's trumping, trumping, like Donald Trump, farting, <laughs> making a bad smell. Okay, so the next one is that'll, 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 and it means that will or that shall, most commonly that will. And it reminds me of the song I don't know who sung this. That'll be the day when you say goodbye. That'll be the day when he makes me cry. She says she's gonna leave. I know it's a lie because that'll be the day when I die. What is that song? Does anybody else know that song? That'll be the day. That'll be the day. Now what you'll notice is the final T becomes like a D. That'll that'll, tongue out for the th, that'll, and the l is plosive, that'll, sorry, lateral plosive, so it comes out the side, that'll, that'll, that'll be the day, that'll be the day, so that will be the day, that will be the day, but I don't know who sang that, so if anyone can help me out on that, that'd be great, because it's just come into my head, okay, so the next one is that'a, that -a. never write this down. 
Never write this down. Um, I, I hear this sometimes, but I would never see it written. It would be odd to see it written. And um, it means that are. That are. So I might say, um, can you go and speak to those girls over there? The girls that are giggling. Can you go and speak to those girls over there? The girls that are giggling. And rather than saying the girls that are giggling, I'd say the girls that are, that are, it almost becomes like an ah, doesn't it? That are, that are giggling. That are, that are giggling. That are giggling. <laughs> that are giggling. <laughs> it's like a tongue twister. That are giggling. Okay. Um, ah, Harrison said that song that I was just singing is Buddy Holiday and the Crickets. Ooh, fabulous. Yes, I like a bit of Buddy Holly. Great singer. Great singer. Okay, so the next one, a very common one, is that's. That's. And that means that has or that is. Um, uh, give me a sentence. What can I say that includes that's? That's. Um, that's exactly what I expect from you. So if you arrive at my class, you give the video a thumb up, you watch the whole class, you interact politely with other members of the, um, of the audience and you share with your friends, I'll be, I'll be like, that's amazing. That is amazing. That's amazing. That's exactly what I expect from you. That's. Notice again, TH is always put your tongue between your teeth. That's, that's. Now it doesn't have to be that, that. So the final T becomes more like a that's, that's. It's almost omitted, actually. We lose it. Let's lose that final T. Throw it away. That's, that's. That's amazing, darling. Okay, uh, guys, anyone new here? Anyone new in the YouTube room? There's only 177 of you. A long way away from 300, which is a shame. But um, of the 177, is anyone here not a subscriber? Um, if you're not a subscriber, then I, I implore you, I beg you, please, 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 it's free, but please do press that subscribe button. It will help me no end. And as it's a Sunday, I'm giving up my Sunday, it's a beautiful day outside and I'm stuck in here in a stuffy room with you, then I ask in return, please just press that subscribe button. That would be amazing. Um, all right, so the next one we're going to look at is um, that'd, that'd. So we've got um, that would or that had, that'd, that'd, that would. So um, I've just asked you if you could make sure you've subscribed and I said that would be amazing. What I could have said is that'd be, that'd be amazing. Meaning that would be amazing. That'd be amazing. If you just press that subscribe button, that'd be amazing. That'd make me happy. Um, I wouldn't write this down in a formal letter, but um, I'd hear it all the time. That'd be amazing. Okay. Um, by the way, if you're on Facebook and you've not yet discovered the YouTube channel, then you're missing out because there's hundreds of lessons that could help you on the YouTube channel. So do come and find me and join me on YouTube. English Like a Native, the link's in the description of the video. Um, okay, so the next one, another TH, is THERD. 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 It's short for there had or there would. There had or there would. There'd. Um, so, for example, I might say, um, um, if I was going to invite you to a fun fair, to a fun fair where there's rides and games and fun, fun, fun and candy floss, I could say, um, uh, if you come along, there'd be lots of things for you to do. If you come along to the fun fair, there'd be lots of things to do. There'd be, there would be, there'd be lots, there'd be lots. Um, um, tomorrow in Pakistan is Independence Day and I'm sure there'd be lots of celebrations going on. There would be lots of celebrations going on. There'd be lots of celebrations going on. Um, so happy Independence Day tomorrow if you are um, living in Pakistan or if you are from Pakistan and you're going to be celebrating tomorrow. Whoop, whoop, party time. 
Okay, so the next one is there are. This one is quite common. There are. And we shorten this to there. There are. There are. How do you do this in a sentence? There are lots. There are. There are. It, it sounds more like that. It's hard to take it singularly, but in a sentence it sounds like there are. There are. There are. Um, so I could say for the Independence Day celebrations, there are lots. There are lots, there are lots of um, parties, dances, uh, events going on. There are lots, there are, there are, there are. It to me almost sounds the same as there are. You're just taking it, you're just making it quicker. There are, there are lots of things going on. There are lots of celebrations all over the world. Okay. Um... Yes, uh, for those of you, candy floss is, um, some people call it cotton candy. I think in America they call it cotton candy. But we call it um, candy floss. So you got cotton candy and candy floss. Cotton candy, candy floss. <laughs> so funny what pe different people call them. Call different things. I love language. It's so interesting. Okay, so the next one is there's there's very easy it, it means there has or there is so if there's been a terrible incident maybe a car accident i might say to you hey don't drive down this road there's been an accident there's there's been an accident um don't drive down there there's been an accident and then we have these are these are this is a contraction. I never see this written down. Never use this in written English. But this means these are. These are. So if you came to stay at my house as my guest, I would always make sure you had some fresh, clean towels so that you could have a nice wash in the morning and use some fresh, clean towels um, to dry yourself after your shower or your bath. And I would pass you the towels and say, these are your towels. Um, if you need anything, let me know. But these are, these are your towels. These are your towels. Okay? These are, these are. That S is a Z as well. These are. Okay, let's see. How many more do we have? Quite a few. Um, oh, we have two pages still to go. <gasps> There's so many contractions. Goodness me. Okay, so the next one, without further ado, is they'd. 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 For they had or they would. They'd. They'd love to come with you on your holiday. Or they'd love to go with you, sorry, on your holiday. They'd love to go with you. They would. They'd. They'd love to go with you. And the next one is they'll. 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 So if you ask for my bears, you come around and say, Where are your bears, Anna? And I'll say, They will be here later. They'll be here later they'll, they'll, they'll be here later. So tune in. Um, so the next one is there, which is um, short for they are. And this is one of those um, words that is a homophone. A homophone. If you don't know what homophones are, then you need to catch up on the lesson that I taught uh two days ago, maybe yesterday, I can't remember, but I taught a lesson all about homophones, which are words that sound the same as other words, but have different meanings and different spellings. And there, over there, there is belonging to them, the pronoun, and they are the contraction. There, there, there sat there. The bears, they are sat there. There sat there. The next one is they've, 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 they have, they've. So I might say to you, Anna, if you were Anna, <laughs> I might say, Anna, you need to go live. They've been waiting for 10 minutes. You need to go live. They've been waiting for you. They have. They've been waiting for you. All right. The next one is, um, this is this is, this is, it's a difficult one to say on its own, you'd never write this, never, 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 never write this, um, and it's this is or this has, um, so I might say, um, this is my son, this is 
this is my son. Although, to be honest, it's so easy just to say this is, this is my son. It would be silly for me to say, this is my son. This is my son. Um, so, yeah, it's not, I don't commonly really hear it. Um, if you ever see it written, though, it means this is. But don't, don't use it, is my advice. Those are, those are. This is short for those are, those are, those are my bears, those are my bears, those are my bears, those, those are, those are my bears. Okay, we're rattling through these now. These are two words that you potentially would see mostly in Old English, like poetry. And the first one is tis, tis. Um, you, I know this is particularly common in... Um, uh, Christmas time in here in the UK we celebrate Christmas uh, most of us celebrate Christmas and it means it is it means it is because you'll hear tis the season to be jolly fa la 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 tis it is tis don't write this though it's very old fashioned it's, it seems odd these days to write that down and the other one is twas twas it means it was it was and again, you'd see this in Old English or in poetry or in um, in old nursery rhymes or um, old songs. Twas. Twas the night before Christmas. I don't know the rest of that sentence. So you've got tis and twas. It is and it was. The next one is wasn't. Very common, both formal and informal. Wasn't. Was not. I was not there last night. I wasn't there last night completely acceptable in any circumstance. I wasn't there. I can't tell you what happened because I wasn't there. Wasn't. And that S is a Z. Wasn't. Wasn't. And the next one is weed. Weed. Make sure that E is long. This is short for we had or we would. Weed. Weed. Um, so I might say to you, look, it's getting late. We had better go. It would be um, wise for us to leave. We had better go. It's getting late. We'd better go. We'd. We'd better. We'd better go. Bye. And then the next one is um, we'd have. Wow, this is an interesting contraction. This contracts three words. We would have. We'd have. We would have. We'd have gone. We would have gone. We would have gone ten minutes ago um, if if um, it wasn't raining. We would have gone 10 minutes ago if it wasn't raining, but because it rained, we didn't go 10 minutes ago. We would have, is what we'd say. We would have gone 10 minutes ago, but it was raining. We would have gone. We would have. Would have. Would have. Would have. Never, never write this. Never write this down, but it's commonly said. Would have. I would have called, but my phone died. <laughs> That's what I have to say quite often. My phone dies all the time. So the next one, very common, is we'll. 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 Short for we will. We'll be with you again tomorrow. Me and the bears. We'll be with you again tomorrow. And then the next one is we're. 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 Meaning we are. We are here together learning English. We're, we're, we're here together learning English. Um, and then we have we've, we've, short for we have. Um, we've been here learning English for an hour. Congratulations. We've been here learning English for an hour. We've, we've. And then we've got weren't, weren't, again, very common. And these are fine to use in both formal and informal circumstances. We were not, we were not, weren't, weren't. Notice how I'm pronouncing this one because this is commonly mispronounced. Were, weren't, weren't, weren't. We were not there, we weren't there. We weren't there, okay? The next contraction is wattle, wattle, wattle. 
It means what will or what shall. What'll. What will you do? What will you do when you finish university? I would say, what'll you do when you finish university? What'll you do when you finish school? What'll. What'll. What'll you do to improve your English? Will you subscribe to my YouTube channel? You definitely should. I hope you're gonna. Um, the next one is what are, water, water. So it sounds like water, doesn't it? Water, water, what are you doing? What are you doing? So if I was to speak fast, even if I'm speaking formally, actually, I might say, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you planning to do when you leave university? What are, what are, what are? And the next one is what's commonly used, meaning what is, what has, or what does. Um, most commonly, though, for what is. So I might say, what's that over there? What's that on your face? I have something on my face. Oh, that's my nose. What's that? Many of you, because you're learning English, might say, oh, what's that? If you're not sure how to pronounce something, you might say, what's that? What is that? What's? What's? Okay. Then we have what of, what of, what of, meaning what have, what of, what have you done? <laughs> what have you done? I've walked into the front room. The front room is a mess and I'll go, what have you done? I, it was clean when I left. What have you done? What have? And then the next one is whens. Whens. I hope you're making note of when these S's are sounded like Z's. Whens. Whens means when is or when has. Um, so I might say, when is, when is your friend due? To be due means to be expected. At what time is your friend expected? When's your friend due to arrive? When's your friend due to arrive? When's your? When's your friend? When's your friend? Rather than when is your friend? When's your friend? When's your friend due to arrive? And then we have where'd. Where'd. As in where did. Where'd. Again, look at this pronunciation because this is mispronounced a lot. Where. Wed, 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 wed. Where'd you go? Where did you go? Where'd you go? Um, where'd, um, where'd, where'd you go on holiday? I might say, ah, you went on holiday. Where'd you go on holiday? Where did you go? And then we have where, wearer, wearer, wearer. <laughs> This is the contraction for where are. I would never, ever, ever write this down. It's weird. I wouldn't write this down, but you might say it where are. So it'd be where are, where are, where are. Becomes like a schwa. Where are you going? Where Where are you going? Where are you going? And then we've got where's, another Z sound, where's. Where's is short for where has, where is, and where does. Where's. Where is your friend? I might say, where's your friend? Where's your, where's your friend? I thought you had your friend with you. Where's your friend? Okay, we're getting to the bottom of these long notes. Um, guys, just so you know, if, um, if, if you have sent a super chat, um, which I think today is just Julia, you are entitled to these notes, of course. That's what I do to say thank you. So if you would... Um, if you have dropped a super chat, um, so Julia, just send me a message to remind me and I will send you the notes to say thank you for your contribution. Um, if you're still here, I'm not sure if you are. Okay, so let's carry on, get to the end of these. We've got where of, where of, where have. So where have you been? Where have you been? Where of, where of you been? Where of, and we actually sound the R in this one, the letter R. We go, we go, where, where of, where have you been? Where have you been? Where have you been? <sighs> Tough one. Where have you been? The next word is witches, witches. <laughs> this is short for which is, or sometimes which has. 
So I might say, um, which, which is, which is the right one? Maybe if I'm picking up your handbag, you're like, um, could you pass me my handbag? And I'd say, which, which is the right one? I'm not sure which one's the right one. Which is, which is, which is the right one? Which is the right one? Rather than which is the right one? Again, they sound very similar. They sound very similar, but you know, never write this down. Which is strange. Who'd, who'd, who'd is short for who would, who had, or who did. Who'd, who'd. Um, so I might say to you, who would like another live lesson next week? Who'd like, who'd like, who'd like another live lesson next week? Who'd, who'd like? Tell me, who'd like? All right, the next one is who'd've. Here's another one. It contracts three words. Who'd've, who'd've, who would have, who would have, who'd've. Who would have? And I often think of this particular one with the phrase, who would have thought? Who, who would have thought means, um, who would have, no one would believe it. So if something happens that's unbelievable, then you might say, who would have thought? Who would have thought? Who would have imagined it? It just means it's unbelievable. Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought? Who'd have? Who'd have, who'd have thought, who'd have thought, it's unbelievable, who'd have thought. Okay, then we have, um, who'll, who'll, who will, so there's a contraction for who will, or who shall, in some cases, so I might say, who will help me to carry my books, who'll, who'll, who will? I almost do a W. Who will? Who will? Who will? Who will? Who will help me? Who will help me with my books? Will you help me? Ah, you'll help me. Oh, there's another contraction. We're coming on to that very shortly. Then we have who were, who were, and this is short for who are. So I might be saying I don't know you. Who are you? But instead of saying, who are you? I would say, who are you? Who are, who are you? Who are you? Hey, who are you? I don't know. I don't know who I am. The next one is whose, whose. Who has, who is, or who does. Whose, whose. So I might say, um, who is attending my lesson tomorrow? And instead of saying who is attending, I'd say who's attending? Who's attending? Who's attending my lesson tomorrow? Who's attending my lessons all next week? Um, who's subscribed? Who is subscribed? Who's subscribed? So we use that often and the S is like a Z. Who's? Just make sure that the um, W is silent, but we make it breathy. <sighs> Who's? Who's? All right, we're nearly there, guys. We're on the last page. Yes, we are. Woohoo! Okay, so the next one is Hoove. Hoove. And this means who have. Who have. So I might say, you were on the phone for a very long time. Who have you been speaking to? You were on the phone for a very long time. Who've you been speaking to? Who have you been speaking to? Who've you been speaking to all this time? Well, <laughs> the next one is wide, wide. This is a homophone actually, because it sounds like to be wide, W-I-D-E. But what it actually is, is a contraction of why did, why did, wide wide but it sounds exactly the same as the word to be wide or something is wide wide um so this one is spelt w h y apostrophe d why did you do that why'd you do that why'd you do that why'd you do that why'd you do that i'm gonna lose facebook again oh 
There we go. I caught you. I caught you before you fell. Whew. I got your Facebook. Don't worry. All right. The next one, and we're getting very close to the end now, is wire. Wire. Another homophone. This one sounds like a wire. Like, um, like uh, this is a wire. Let me show uh, YouTube. Wire. This is a wire, spelt differently, sounds the same. Um, but in this case, we're saying, why are? Why are you doing this? Why are you still doing a lesson after one hour and 14 minutes? Wire. Because there's lots of contractions, that's why. Wire. 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 Um, and then the next one is wise. Wise. Another homophone. Because this sounds very much like to be wise, which is spelt W-I-S-E, which means to be clever, to be knowledgeable, to be, um, yes, old and experienced and wise. Wise. But in this case, this is the contraction for why has, why is, or why does. Wise. So I might say, why is, why is the sky blue? Why is the sky blue? And instead of saying, why is the sky blue? I'd say, why is the sky blue? Why is the sky blue? Why is the sky blue? Because it was painted blue. <laughs> okay, the next one is the word won't. Won't. I get asked regularly for the pronunciation of this, so pay attention to this one. Wo, like W O W. Wo, and then N T. Won't. 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 I will not is what it means. I won't do it. I won't get to 300 viewers before the end of this lesson. I will not get to 300 viewers before the end of this lesson. I won't. I won't do it. It won't happen. It will not happen. <gasps> okay, the next one is would have. Would have is short for. And we say would have. Would have. And notice that it becomes like a schwa. Would, would, would have, would have. It's very lazy. Would have, would have. I would have maybe had 300 people watching if I didn't have computer problems. If my stream didn't break, I would have, I would have. Okay. And the next one is wouldn't. Very common. Wouldn't. It means would not. I would not I would not go, I would not go, um, I would not go to my brother's house last week because I didn't want to. I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go to my brother's house last week because I didn't want to. I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go. Okay, and then we have the last five. Oh, we've gotten through the whole list. Gotten gotten what a word gotten we have made it through the whole list so the fifth to the end word is y'all y'all now this is mostly american it's quite co colloquial um but i do occasionally hear it here in the uk y'all um it means you all um i'll give it to y'all i'll give it to y'all later I give it to you all later. You probably would hear it from people with regional accents. Um, you definitely hear it from Americans. Y'all, y'all, you all, y all, y'all. And then we have you'd. You'd, it means you had or you would. You, um, I might say you had, you had, you'd, you had better go home. You had better go home. You had better go home. You're going to be in trouble if you stay here any later. You'd better go home. You'd better go home because you'll be in trouble if you stay any longer. You'd. And then we have number three from the end is you'll. You'll. You will or you shall. You'll. You'll. So I might say you will learn a lot if you watch my videos on YouTube. You'll learn a lot if you watch my videos on YouTube. You'll learn, you'll learn, you'll learn. And that L carries over into the word learn. You'll learn, you'll learn. 
Okay, so the next one is your, your, short for you are, your, um, uh, another homophone because we have a different version of the word your, sounds the same, so I might say um, you are, if you bang your head and you have blood on your face, I might say you are bleeding, you are bleeding, but instead of saying you are, because that feels weird, I'd say you're bleeding, <gasps> you're bleeding, you are bleeding, you're bleeding, are you okay? You're bleeding, you need a plaster. And the very last word, whoop, 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 the very last word is you've, you've, short for you have, you have, you've. Um, so I might say, you have been a fantastic audience, so patient and so kind, you've. You've been a fantastic audience. You've been fantastic. You've been amazing. Thank you so much for joining me. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is our complete list of contractions that you are likely to encounter within the English language, specifically in the British English language. And that is how to pronounce them and what they actually mean. I do hope that you have found this lesson helpful. Um, if you have, then make sure before you leave that you show some love, whether it be a thumb or a heart, that you have subscribed to the YouTube channel, wherever you're watching, hop over to the YouTube channel and click that subscribe button. It's absolutely free. And if you are interested in improving your pronunciation and you want to sound more like me, then there are a few things that you can do. Firstly, I do have a pronunciation course. It's very reasonably priced. Um, you have lifetime access once you sign up and the link for that is in the description box of my YouTube video. But if you are not on YouTube, it's found on the website www.britishenglishpro.com britishenglishpro.com. It's a very affordable and thorough pronunciation course if you want to improve. But if you are unable to afford any courses, then I do recommend that mimicking, imitating, listening and repeating is one of the best things you can do. There are a number, there are a number of videos here including one that I did recently called the 250 most common words in the English language, which gives you a chance to listen and repeat. But then also I recommend audiobooks. That's the one thing that I discovered recently that I think is fantastic. Um, it certainly has helped me with different accents, but you can find many audiobooks that have native British English um, narrators like Stephen Fry for example and you can get a 30-day free trial I'm not being sponsored by them or anything this is not a sponsorship this is just my recommendation as one person to the next um audiobooks it's a free trial for 30 days I did the trial and then I signed up for it afterwards because I thought it was fantastic it's great for me when I'm driving it's great for when I'm doing the cooking or the housework I just put on an audiobook and I listen to a book and it's great and if you're learning English, I think it's a fantastic resource. And if you're interested in that, the link is in the description box below, the audiobooks free trial. Um, other than that, if you have any burning questions, I'm gonna stay on YouTube for the next five minutes answering questions. So talk to me, give me your questions, guys. I'm here for you. Um, and the other thing I'll say is I do put pronunciation practice on Instagram as well. Again, that's free. Instagram is a free app to download and you just have to follow me, British English Pro, on Instagram. And you can make the most of that. Um, patrons, you've been very quiet. I hope you're all well. I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons. They're very supportive. Um, but I do hope you found that helpful. Anyway, so... Um, Let's have a look at what you guys are saying. Um, lots of love and very sweet things coming through on YouTube. Um, if you've got any questions, guys, hop it to, over to YouTube. That's the chat room that I can see quite easily. So come and talk to me there and I'll be able to answer you. Um, Anna, could you say out loud a couple of short sentences? Yes, let me do that for you. Um, my English classes... My English classes, actually, we'd say, my English classes are on Tuesdays and Thursdays. He usually does his homework at night and the flights at 7am. 
And the other sentence you wanted me to say, um, we've got, the children are playing in the park. I love sunbathing in the garden. Don't we all? He's studying physics at university. Let's meet at the bus stop. Look, that's a Picasso on the wall and the course starts in May. Um, oh gosh, lots of comments just jumping up now. Um, uh, it's my first time with you, says um, Hannington, and I've liked your lesson already. Thank you, Hannington. Make sure you also subscribe so you don't miss out on future lessons. That'd be great. And I'm really glad that you found us. Um, Mehmet has said, advanced grammar, please. Um, you know how I feel about grammar. Or if you've been with me for any particular amount of time, you'll know I find grammar quite dull. And most natives don't know grammar rules. Um, but my lessons tend to focus on topics. And so as I'm speaking, you'll be hearing advanced grammar and very native way of speaking. So the best thing is to suggest suggest a subject or a topic that you would like me to talk around and deliver a lesson on. That's the best bet for you to get what you want. Uh, okay, so many come through. I don't know where I was. I've now lost my place. Uh, okay, I'm going to scroll to the bottom. Okay, so um, how do you pronounce the word often? This can be pronounced in two ways and both are perfectly acceptable. We have often, no T, or often with a T. Often or often. Both are fine. Um, how, how do we say the word months? So if we have five, five months, we put the tongue between the teeth, th -th -th month, and then an S, months. It's a tough one. Even natives struggle with it. Months, months. Um, okay, um, some of you have to go. Thank you for joining me. Anna, I wonder if an S sound before a Y sound assimilates to form a SH. Uh, like in the phrase, bless you, bless you. Uh, yes, in that case, it does say, you do say bless you and it sounds like a SH, bless you. Um, Michael says, I'm watching your videos while doing my workout. I enjoy it a lot. Great. Well, I hope that you're building up those muscles. Have you seen the video I did about fitness vocabulary? You might find that helpful if you're a fitness person. Um, what do we have? Oh, Devon, thank you so much. Bless you. Devon has just dropped a $2 super chat and says, I listen because you have a lovely voice. Thank you. That's very kind. That's very, very kind. Um, um, I think that you forgot wanna for want to, um, want, wanna, wanna, mm, we, okay, so it's not, it's not strictly a contraction, it's not strictly a contraction, um, it's more slang, so wanna, gonna, spelt with an A, um, is, it, they're slang, they're slang words, um, but yes, you're right, so wanna, gonna, um, but it's slang. Okay. Um, mm, 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 mm. I wish you all the luck with your channel. Thank you so much. Uh, what is rampant? Um, to be rampant. I don't know how to explain that to you, but it's kind of like to be, to be desperate in a certain way. If you look it up in the dictionary, you'll get a clear idea. Um, but it's like to be desperate, to be rampant, to be, um, I don't know. How, can someone look it up in the dictionary for me and give an exact, an exact, um, an exact definition of the word rampant? Um, hi Anna, please some explanation for it's for what I know it is the contraction of it is. Yes, it is. That's right. But many use it for possessive pronoun. Can you help me? Um, you never put an apostrophe before the S in it's when it's possessive. Possessive it's has no apostrophe. Okay, so it's with a apostrophe, I-T apostrophe S is it is. That's a contraction. Um, if I say it's mine, it belongs to me, then I, I, I just do I-T-S, it's mine. There's no apostrophe. Okay, hope that helps. Anna, I've heard some people in England say, um, if I was you, do natives speak that way? Yes, they do. Um, if I was you, it's not correct. It should be if I were you, but many natives make mistakes. Many natives make grammatical mistakes. 
and depending on um, their background or um, their education level and even some very well-educated um, natives will still make grammatical errors because it depends on what they've heard growing up and depends on their understanding. Like I've said, we don't really learn grammar rules. We just kind of have a get a feel for it. But if I were you is what should be said and but lots of people do say if I was you, if I was you. I probably said it occasionally. Anna, when can we say thingamajig or thing thingamy, a thingamy? A thingamy jig is what we normally say. A thingamy jig is a fun word. It's a nonsense word. It's slang and it means a thing. A thing. When you can't think of the word for what it is, like um let's say I can't remember the word for pen. If I can't remember the word for the pen, I'd say, um, can you pass me the thingy majig? You know, the the thingy majig. So it's it's just it's just a fun word that we use when we can't remember the name of the noun that that we're trying to think of. For example, we use it for the for a person, so a proper noun. So you might say, um, oh that girl, thingy majig. Um, that girl, she was really nice. Thingy majig said to me. She, uh, who, what's she called? You know, thingamajig. <laughs> so sometimes we use thingamajig for people as well as for things. Um, how do you pronounce the word casual? Interesting one. Casual. 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 How to pronounce these words so that I can hear which words is for core? Um, oh, hang on. I'm confused. Um, oh, so, okay, so core. We pronounce core and call. So the core, the middle, the body, the main bit, the core, core, like core strength, or the core of the problem, core, or an apple core, it's just this vowel, or, and call has an L, call, call, all right? Okay, how do you pronounce singing, singing, back of the tongue high, singing, I'm singing, la 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 singing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm so sorry, but I've been here for an hour and a half. It is Sunday. It is sunny outside, so I'm going to go and enjoy my Sunday evening. I hope that you found my time um, and this lesson useful. I really do. Um, I do my very best to provide as much for you as I can, but now I need to go and enjoy a little bit of time to myself. Thank you so much for taking the time out to spend it with me. And um, like I said, I hope it was of use to you. If you did find it helpful, then it would mean an awful lot to me if you can make sure that my efforts are spread around and that most the most amount of people get the most out of it. So let's get these lessons shared. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do. And if you haven't already given some love, then please do that too. I will probably... Probably, I'm, I'm not sure on my schedule next week because I have an awful lot to do, but I will probably be live again tomorrow. So I will only be live on Facebook, um, on YouTube, sorry. So make sure you're with me on YouTube, but I will announce it on Facebook and I'll announce it on Instagram. So if you want to know exactly when I'm going to be live, then join me on those social platforms. The link is in the description box below. And I just want to finish by saying a huge thanks once again to my patrons and to those two people who dropped me super chat. So to Devon and to Julia for supporting this community. Guys, have a lovely weekend. I'm going to say goodbye to Facebook first. Goodbye, my darlings. You're lovely. I'll see you soon. Bye. And that has ended. And YouTube, thank you so much. I will um, probably, probably the live lesson tomorrow will be later in the afternoon. Um, but like I said, join me on Facebook and Instagram to find out exactly when I'll be live. Patrons, you will get a message on the Patreon website. Okay, guys, take care. Happy Sunday. Mwah. Lots of love from London.